Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Matter of fact, I tell you what, we're going to find that all of these heavyweight fights and probably light heavyweight cruiserweight and could be some welterweight, junior welterweight fights heading over to Saudi Arabia, the new home of boxing. Now, I still feel uh, Las Vegas, for many fighters, will remain the holy grail. You got um, a lot of big names who will still fight out there, but I think names like Geronte Davis, Ryan Garcia, Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, Canelo, uh, you know, Devin Haney, I think the Charlo boys, if they get their stuff together, all fighters who, for the most part, have been, you know, uh, uh, who've had a presence in Las Vegas. I just think, when you look at, and listen and look at the plans that Saudi's putting in place, those big name fighters are going to make their way over there. Now, this this is the problem that I see, right? And remember, for all you McNicholases out there and shit who feel that you speak in fact, I'm just having a conversation. So hold your horses and don't take it to the stupid. Look, the way the Saudis, they're bracketing fights. It's it keeps these fighters busy, okay? And that's a beautiful thing because we've seen, you know, the AJs fight once a year, once every 12, 14, 14 months, right? Not being active. We've seen Tyson Fury going active, uh, Deontay Walter going active. Look at what's going on with Andy Ruiz, right? Whether the inactivity is beyond the control or it is, the bottom line is inactivity. And believe you me, if there was a 30... 20, 30, 40 million dollar payday out there, all these fighters would have been active. I don't give a shit what injury they had. That ass would be in that ring to get that money. So, so, so the thing about the Saudis and what they're doing, basically what they're having right now in the heavyweight division, it's like a tournament. It's, it's like a tournament. You look at the, the guys they had fighting, man, and I think it was like six guys in the top 10. Uh, but just look at what they put together. And those who lost, right? They just got to sit back and regroup, and the other ones move on. And then they bring other names now and match them up with other fighters. So there's a natural order of progression here. If you win, this is the problem. Saudi Box is going to have a high turnover, right? Because they, these fighters are only fighting twice, right? They, they, it's not like they have them set up to where they're fighting three times a year. It's twice a year. So this is what, remember, this is just a conversation, my opinion. You're free to disagree with me. You get some of these guys who come out here and make, you know, I would say great money compared to what they would have made fighting elsewhere. For a fight, let's say, in January. Then they got another fight for, let's say, June, July. When really fighters should be fighting three times a year. Uh, three times a year. But now they make that money. They go on cruise control. They got to find a way to stay in the gym, which is hard to do because now all these guys are making that silk pajama money, what's going to be their motivation? They probably get through the first year. Fight. Oh, man, I got paid. Get back in the gym. Next fight. Feeling good. Got another payday. But then after that, with two really good paydays, life-changing money, what's the motivation? Silk pajama syndrome. So now those guys probably end up falling off because they go through an Andy Ruiz type uh, a situation where you got all this money and just not taking things serious, not listening to your to your trainer, to your friends, to your family, and you end up getting back in the ring and losing. So now you're out of there. Now you have the turnover. So that's what I foresee happening because these guys get into boxing. I think everyone who gets into boxing wants to make money. And I think secondly, they want the legacy and titles. And, and, and I really believe that. I, I think you get some guys that, yeah, I want to be the champ. I want to get the belt. I want to this. I want to use my jab. I want to, you know, yo, all right, cool, Mick Nicholas. That's what you want to do. But you can't tell me these guys out here who have not made the AJ money, the Wilder money, the Fury money, the Canelo money, not even made $15 million yet, right? You can't tell me. You offer them an opportunity to fight for five or six million, or an opportunity to fight for a title, an undisputed distinction for one million. 
you can't tell me they ain't gonna pass up on them stupid ass titles. All right. So if you disagree with me, I just have to tell you, you know, in this case, you, know, you need to hold your horses and don't take it to the stupid. But what happens after they get the money? And, and that that that's my concern. So we just saw what happened here. You know, Wilder, he went in there with slip pajama syndrome, bad trainer syndrome, uh, goddamn hallucinogen syndrome, took it to the stupid syndrome, ate too much barbecue syndrome. Wilder just had all kind of shit going on with him. But why? Because he continues to let us know, I don't have to do this no more. I don't have to do this, man. You know, I, I mean, he sound like Mayweather. I made wise investments. I uh, surround myself with smart people. Smart business decisions. Minor setback for a major comeback, right? All that Floyd Mayweather talk. That's how wild it's sounding right now. And, and, and I applaud him. But it's the same thing that we're going to see happening. We just saw Ajit Kabayo. Right? The man's been boxing over 10 years, 11, 12 years or something, right? No one really knew who he was. But he's been putting in work. European champion. Man been putting in work. Man just got a big win against Arsenabek Mahmoudov, right? Ajit Kabayo is about to go into another big fight. I truly believe if he gets another big fight and he happens to win, I, and he get, he's making that life-changing money, I don't think he's going to keep that motivation. Apataya made life-changing money, is about to fight again for more money. I just think, and if they're only fighting twice a year, I just think the sit pajama syndrome is going to hit all these guys. Now, it, it, it makes you wonder, you know, this, those guys over in Saudi are brilliant. Man, it, did they structure it this way to make sure we give them the good money, right? The first fight, bring them back a second time. If they win, good money again. Then we know they're probably going to get comfortable, Right? And then now they come back and they we put them in with someone very stiff competition who should clip them because these guys are very comfortable and may not have that same fire in them like they did before. There are some guys like Canelo who just like you know matter how much money that dude make he just even though he's slowing a bit in my opinion he just naturally fueled and just wants to keep going. He no no kidding it's, it's like you know no boxing no life like he says. But we're going to see what happens because these major heavyweight fights that are going to be taking place the next 12 to 18 months in Saudi is going to be huge. But I fully expect to see all the guys in the top 10 at some point within the next three years rotate through Saudi Arabia. And they're going to keep rotating them. And, and I, I think we're going to see a, a very high turnover. Right now you just saw this pool of fighters out there. You know, half of them guys are out of there. Simple, right? So now you're going to see another wave of guys come through. So you already have one wave of turnover. You're going to see another wave of guys come in. They're going to form that pool now, and they're going to see how things go. So it's, it's interesting to see. But again, I say that because I'm just sitting here watching. And, and, and also, I'm drawn from my own experiences. I've seen what happens when guys get to a certain point where they're like, look, man, I'm coming. There's, there's no fire, Right? There's no fire that can pop up that I can't out with the money I have. And once you get to that point, man, it's cruise control. Anything you want to do, right, you can do it. Now, some people taste a little bit different. I mean, if you're a thousandaire, you probably like thousandaire things. If you're a millionaire, you like millionaire things. If you're a billionaire, you like billionaire things. But if you're a billionaire, if you're a millionaire who wants to do billionaire stuff, you probably still have a little fire in you. If you're a thousandaire and want to do millionaire stuff, you probably still have a little fire in you. But if you're a millionaire and you're like, shit, I'm cool with doing millionaire stuff. How are you going to motivate that person to get back in that goddamn ring? Maybe they do it out one last run and go get their ass kicked and that's it. So, again, what's going on over in Saudi? I think it's, I think it's interesting. But to think that anything outside of Saudi Arabia, when it comes to boxing, just to think that they, 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 that Anywhere outside of Saudi Arabia can put on the type of boxing events that the Saudis are putting on right now, I just I just don't see it. I don't see it. And I'm being honest with you. You know, it's uh when I look at what's his name? Um Anthony Joshua, right? He fights on the day of reckoning card, right? This year he gets a big win. Then you take a look at when he went and fought uh, against Andy Ruiz for the rematch and the Clash of the Dunes. And then you look that he fought uh, 
and the um, whole thing with Yusik and Rage on the Red Sea. And just look at those events and the kind of money that was generated and the kind of money that was paid to the, to the athletes. Those are huge events. And these events in Saudi just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what do you notice that's happening? The different names that are popping up on these fight cards, the different fight cards that are being being created. Uh, now they got the Riyadh season stuff, you know, and this it's just a, a snowball that's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know why? Because you say, well, who's gonna be the one there, man, you kind of responsible for making sure that snowball keeps moving. Not anyone in particular, it's that goddamn sovereign wealth fund over $500 billion. So trust me, that, snow, that snowball is not going to melt anytime soon. It's going to keep growing and getting bigger and bigger. And you're going to see fighters getting paid, life-changing money. And I think their motivation is going to decrease. I, I just see that happening. As a result, high turnover out there as far as the, the big names we're seeing in Saudi. You're going to see them make their money and eventually fizzle off. Unless... It's going to be a concentric few to keep that motivation. I, I just think everyone else who just happened to be counting the blessings to have fallen to the Saudi lap, fallen to this damn pot of gold, they're counting their blessings. They, they never thought they would have made that kind of money, and now they're making it. Those are the ones that are going to fall off. Those are the ones. The Ajit Caballeros. Oh, he's going to fall off. Simple. If Andy Ruiz get out there a couple of fights, he's going to fall off. He already wants to fall off. Okay, you know, Fury, Usyk may be a little bit different, but I, I still think that Usyk ain't gonna hang around long. He makes some more good money out there, right? But these other guys, man, I just like imagine if Fabio Wardley got an opportunity, or Jared Anderson. Imagine if he got the call to be on this next wave of heavyweight fights, and he goes out there and he gets paid. They say they give him ten million. You think he's coming back? That man, whatever his contract is, he'll do that second fight. He's out of here. He already told me he don't know if he want to do it. His brother coming out of jail. He want to make, he want to, it's not like when his brother comes out of jail, that's when he wants to retire. He make that kind of money, he's out of here. Out of here. He ain't worried about making no 1 billion, 500 million, 70 million. That man just want a little bit of dirt money to where he can be on cruise control and not have to worry about nothing. Anyway, we'll see how it plays out. That's my two cents. You can leave your comments below. Hey, we don't have to agree. But let's not take it to the stupid. Y'all keep cool, I'm in the breeze.